Welcome to Chemisode on biomolecules. This is the first part of this biomolecule series and it's all about fats. So this chemisode is probably going to be the smallest chemisode because most of the stuff that we cover in fats has already been covered in biofuels where you looked at um, the hydrolysis of fatty acids and turning them into esters. So I don't need to cover it too much but what we will cover is more along the lines of the biology side of things in terms of fats. Now fats as you know they're triglycerides, they have three fatty acids which are joined using an ester linkage to a glycerol molecule. Now, if you want to have a look at the structure of triglycerides again, please go back to the biofuels and cover that again. What we really care about here is looking at saturated and unsaturated fats. And this is all to do with the fatty acids that are involved in your triglyceride. Unsaturated fats, they come from plant oils. Um, sorry, we'll go, we'll do saturated fats first. Saturated fats are solid fat. They come from animals. Basically, the fat that's on your steak, the fat that's on your pork belly, has a higher melting point, and they normally contain, or they only contain, single bonds. Saturated fats, just like saturated hydrocarbons, only contain single bonds. Unsaturated fats um, are your liquid fats, your plant oils, and these guys, they contain double bonds. These unsaturated fats are, tend to be a bit better for you. Um, they just are, really. You don't need to know why they're better for you, but they just, they're just a bit nicer for you. Um, your butter that you deal with comes from animal fat. Your margarine is um, plant oils which are turned into um, less um, double bonded. The reason, let's go through this, the reason why saturated fats are solid and unsaturated fats are oils and liquids is due to the presence of double bonds. Double bonds contain branching in carbon chains. So basically, if you have a double bond, it has a branch that cannot be bent and cannot be rotated around. This causes the chains to be less densely packed and therefore to have lower dispersion forces holding them together. When you have a solid fat that only contains single bonds, it's just one straight chain which is, um, can be densely packed together. And because they can be densely packed together and flat packed, they have a larger dispersion force holding them together and thus they have a higher melting point and they become solid fats. What we can do with um, fatty acids and what we can do with um, um, saturated and unsaturated fats is calculate the amount of saturation in a fat. So let's have a look at that. The degree of saturation is how many double bonds a fatty acid or a fat contains, or degree of saturation in any type of hydrocarbon, in fact, is how many double bonds it contains. As you know from last year and from a bit earlier on, the test for saturation is using bromine water. Bromine water is a reddish um, colour, and if you add bromine to a unsaturated fat, or an unsaturated hydrocarbon, it will lose its colour because it reacts with it. If you add bromine water to a saturated um, hydrocarbon, it will stay red and it won't react. To test the degree of saturation, you have to think about what's happening in terms of a reaction involving bromine, iodine or hydrogen. One double bond will react with one iodine or one hydrogen or one bromine. This fact will help you understand how many double bonds a fatty acid will have. What you need to do is find the ratio of the fatty acid or even a hydrocarbon to your reactant. So if you find a ratio of number of mole of fatty acid to number of mole of iodine, that ratio will tell you how many double bonds a molecule have. If the ratio is one to one, so one mole of fatty acid to one mole of iodine, you'll have one double bond. If your ratio is one mole of fatty acid to two moles of iodine, it tells you that you're going to have two double bonds in your fatty acid. So it's the ratio of fatty acid to reactant will tell you how many double bonds you have in your molecule. This is, comes in handy when you're trying to work out the degree of saturation. The second method for finding out the degree of saturation is looking at the formula for an unsaturated fatty acid. 
the unsaturated fatty acid will have um, a formula of carbon with n number of carbons, twice as many hydrogens as carbons. If you have a double bond, this ratio will change. For every double bond, you'll lose two hydrogens. So you can look at the ratio of your, um, your fatty acid or your hydrocarbon in particular, and you can actually work out how many double bonds you have using that formula. So the ratio of carbon to hydrogen in a fatty acid is always one to two. For every double bond, two hydrogens are missing. A couple of examples here, uh, hopefully we can see these. Oleic acid has um, is from your data booklet. These are from your data booklet. 17 carbons and, sorry, actually 18 carbons because you have the 17 here and one here and 34 hydrogens. So the ratio of carbon to hydrogen is 18 to 34. This tells you there is one double bond because you need two extra hydrogens to get to that one to two ratio. Looking at steric acid, however, its ratio is 18 to 36. This tells you it must be a saturated hydrocarbon because you have that one to two ratio. So the formula for a saturated fatty acid, please cross out un because this actually should be the formula for a saturated fatty acid is one to two. So one carbon to every two hydrogens. For every double bond, two hydrogens are taken away. So that's how we get oleic acid here as being 18 to 34. How many hydrogens are needed to make that 18 to 36? You need two, so therefore it's one double bond in oleic acid. So that's two ways you can work out the degree of saturation. One, by looking at a ratio of iodine or bromine to your fatty acid. Or the second is by looking at the formula, if you're given the formula. That's degrees of saturation, and that's all we really deal with in fats. Okay, You should know how to write the hydrolysis of um, triglycerides, and that comes from before when we looked at biofuels. Next up is carbohydrates. So um, I'm going to make a new podcast for carbohydrates. I'm going to try and make these podcasts a bit smaller. Thank you.